Well, I'm still watching News Desk here on Joy News Multi TV. To some other stories now, and General Secretary of the People's National Convention is predicting the takeover of the running of governance by drug cartels, money launderers, and other anti democratic forces if the issue of public funding of political parties is not taken seriously here in Ghana. Now, speaking to Joy News on the sidelines of a two day workshop organized by the National Peace Council to collate views of political parties, civil society groups and individuals on how to ensure a peaceful elections next year, Bernard Mona observed that public funding of political parties will not only reinvigorate the quest of political parties to sustain the country's democratic process, but also prevent anti-democratic forces from hijacking our democracy. Eastern Regional Correspondent Kofisian has more. The call for public funding of political parties led the issues raised at a forum to collate views on how to hold successful elections in Ghana by the National Peace Council. Almost all the political parties' representatives, apart from the New Patriotic Party, who were absent, endorsed the proposal for public support for political party activities. They were mostly of the view that state funding will go a long way to help produce capable leaders who could effectively tackle the development challenges of the country. The PNC's General Secretary, Bernard Mona, who however blamed the two leading political parties, the NDC and the NPP, for not showing much interest in the implementation of the idea, did not rule out the influx of anti-democratic forces if the issue is not seriously looked at. So we in the PNC support strongly the public funding of political parties, and I do believe strongly that it is the way to go. Any other thing will beat corruption. Any other thing will lead to money laundering, it will lead to drug cartels taking over the running of political administration in this country. Because the political parties, no matter what, ought to be financed. Who finances them should be a question for all of us to answer. Then do you think that is the situation we find ourselves in? I will not be surprised because the quality of our parliament is suspect. Go to our parliament and look at the caliber of personnel that we have in our parliament. Who says that some of them are not financed? Mm -hmm. by drug barons who say that some of them are not financed by money laundering activities who say that some of them are not financed by criminal gangs? and I'm saying that in order that our democracy is not hijacked it is important for us as a, as, as, as a collective to look at these issues well we can now speak to uh, Bernard Mona who is uh, the well, who's general secretary of the who's general secretary of the People's National Convention? He joins us over the telephone lines now uh, with someone. This one, uh, Mr. Mona. Good morning. But uh, some pretty serious uh, allegations you 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 make there. I mean, can you elaborate? Um, I I was at a forum at the um, Capital View Hotel in Kotoridua, um, where the National Peace Council invited from the South Park, and it. I raised the concern of the lack of public funding of political parties mm. and that it poses a danger and a threat to our democracy and in particular that there is a possibility of drug barons, of money laundering and above all criminal groups, gangsters, hijacking our democracy and that I will not be surprised that it's already taking effect given the quality that we have in Parliament. Indeed, some of our members of Parliament who cannot express themselves very well until they win elections, one wonder on what campaign messages they went on in order to win those seats. It's because they have the resources. Unfortunately, we are unable to monitor and to determine where these resources are coming from. What? So when you have the resources, you are able to go around, interact with your constituents, ensure that you distribute goodies, and that may be the motivation for which people will vote for you. Mr. Mona, Mr. Mona one would say, would it not be too simplistic for you to draw that conclusion? Someone would say it's, it's quite hasty, just to say because someone is rich, he or she wins an election. But, but there is evidence that some members of our parliament have suffered prison sentences as a result of their involvement in that. Can that also be denied? I'm that listening, to, I'm listening to you. It is, mm. it is incontrovertible that some members of our parliament have been found with drugs 
either inside or outside our country. Some have started prison in the uh, sentence somewhere else. And so the question then is, is it not a possibility that drug barons and criminal gangsters can hijack our democracy by sponsoring individuals to go into parliament? And at the end of the day, they will frustrate the passing of legitimate bills in parliament simply because we are in control of our democracy. Is that what is currently happening now? There cannot be doubt that it is a possibility. And my language was very clear mm. that it is a possibility. And we should watch out if we do not want our democracy to be hijacked by such groups in our system. Again, you, you, you mentioned the caliber of MP. So by this, I'm, I'm supposing that this is what you are uh, alluding to. Now, uh, could, could I by that say that uh, you are disappointed in the caliber of MPs we have here in the country? Obviously, you go to Parliament and you listen to the quality of debate sometimes, mm. and you are wondering whether indeed this is the kind of persons we have voted for to go to Parliament to discuss serious matters. They take it on the trivia and allow sensitive issues that border on the lives of our people, mm. issues that will lead to particularly transformation of policy in this country. How many times have we dis dis debated the agricultural policy of our nation? How many times have we debated the quality of education that we have? Mm. How many times have we debated the doctor population ratio in this country? Obviously, I do not see that debates are centered on that one. It is about the transient issues that we largely engage ourselves with. Mm. And I'm saying that all these things have affected the quality of delivery by government. Because largely, if parliament is not up to the task, if parliament is not debating the critical issues that affect all of us, then it means that the issues that ought to be brought to the attention or to be addressed by government, those issues will not be addressed. But, but, Actually, I am not an excited person mm. with the kind of policy debates that characterize our parliament. So speaking of that, I mean, has that always been the trend since 1992 up until now? What has really changed? I have said that the 1992 to 1996 parliament, if you want, you can say 93 to the 97 parliament, have been the best parliament that I have seen in this country. The quality of debate cannot be doubted. The issues that were brought forth cannot be doubted. The opposition was up to the task, evolving alternative policy measures at any point in time that government brought a budget. You saw an alternative budget that was put in place. Any time there was a state of nation address, you saw a qualitative state of the nation address, the opposite. Unfortunately, after the 97 parliament, it does appear that anybody can go to parliament and the quality of debate has diminished. And I am certainly worried. I'm sure that for those of you who have been avid watchers of our democracy, you will concur with me that 1993-1997 parliament were one of the best. After that, our parliament has been nothing but just representative. So, so essentially the current crop of parliamentarians we have are just a waste on, of the government's purse. They're just wasting our You money. cannot conclude that by saying that all of them. Mm. There are some few that are doing well and discharging their mandate. But a large chunk of our parliament Certainly, it's not up to the task. I see. Bernard Mona, many thanks for your time on News Desk this morning. And Bernard Mona is the General Secretary of the People's National Convention. We're taking a break here. When we come back, we'll bring your business here on News Desk.